Hello, welcome everyone. This is Kristen Fagan here. I am the graphic, one of the graphic designers and jewelry designers over at Softlex Company. And uh, you're here for a new episode of Free Spirit Feeding. I do this, um, this series every Monday here on the Softlex Company YouTube channel at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And I'm always live with you guys. Happy to see you today. Let me just see, get settled in here. We've got a few people live watching with us. Hello, hello. Today we are gonna be working on a super sweet Valentine heart pendant necklace tutorial. So we're going to be working with the pink rhodochrosite softlex beading wire. Um, we have a special going on right now. It's until tomorrow, January 19th. Um, that is a curated section of pink items and all of the items in that section are an extra 20% off. And I say extra 20% because Many, if not all of the items in that category are already discounted. So you'll see a sale price. And then once you add that item to your cart at softlexcompany.com, you will see an extra 20% off um, on all of the items in that curated pink section. Um, so pink is the color of the month. We're highlighting it uh, this week up until tomorrow. And that's what I'm gonna be working with uh, today. I'm gonna to be working with the Softlex Beading Wire Pink Rotochrosite. And it's a really pretty, true, bubblegummy kind of pink. Um, and I'm gonna pair it with some really pretty pink pearls, some shell, and some very soft um, teal colors, which will help complement the pink, but tone it down a little bit too. Um, so I'm really excited about sharing that project with you all today. Hi, Lydia. Good to see you. And Gail is here too. Hi, Gail. Thanks for joining me. Um, I am feeling all pretty in pink <laughs> today. So a little bit about Softlex Beading Wire, if you've never worked with it before. It is a 49-strand uh, stainless steel beading, beading wire that has been colored and then has a nylon coating on top. Um, this pink rhodochrosite is one of our first Softlex colors. We had about a um, series of maybe 10 colors that were originally introduced 20 some odd years ago, so way before my time. And this is one of our uh, early, early colors and it is now on closeout. It is a color we're no longer going to be manufacturing. We still have a good supply left, but you'll be able to find this in the Softlex Company closeout section over at softlexcompany.com. And right now it's on closeout sale, but then you'll also get an extra 20% off up until tomorrow, January 19th at midnight Pacific time because we're doing all things pink. So sad to see the color go, but we still have quite a bit of stock on it. So we'll have it around for a little while. It's just a color we're no longer going to be uh, moving forward with in the future. Um, and it's the first of quite a few colors we're going to be closing out this year. And I'm sorry to say goodbye to certain colors, but happy to possibly bring in some new colors in the future. So we'll see. Hey, we got a few more friends uh, joining us. We've got Sherry, hi Sherry, and Abby and Paula, Liz is here, and Deborah and Becky and Agnes. Awesome, so happy to see everybody. Let's, uh, let's get going. Well, so we'll start by talking about the supplies for our project, and then I will share with you some simple stringing, some crimping, and how to close it off. Hey, Barbara. 
Let's turn you guys down to my beading table. And the first thing I wanna talk about um, is the Great Bead Extravaganza. Hi, Diane, welcome. So if you guys have not heard, we did an event called the Great Bead Extravaganza. We were one of 17 businesses that came together collectively. And um, thank you, Damien, for sharing the link to the group. It is on Facebook. There's a group called the Great Bead Extravaganza. Go ahead and join us over there and save the date February 5th through 7th for our next event. So the first one was back in November. It was at the time um, 17 companies that came together as a collective, uh, volunteered our time and efforts to put on this event. Has lots of great sales, product um, introductions and workshops, kits, all sorts of fun stuff going on. Um, and we decided to do it again. So we're really excited to, to come back. This is normally Tucson week or one of the weeks in Tucson, if you guys are familiar with the Tucson Bead and Gem Show. And um, since that has been postponed due to the pandemic, we wanted to still show up and provide some fun beady goodness for you guys over in the group. So come join us, the Great Beat Extravaganza, save the date February 5th through 7th, um, and Softlex Company will be one of the presenters during the event. Deborah says it was a lot of fun last time. Yeah, we did put in some bathroom breaks for the schedule uh, <laughs> because last time we had everyone scheduled back to back to back, not realizing, um, you know, I guess when we thought about it, we didn't think everyone would sit through all of them. We thought maybe you'd pick and choose, you know, what uh, presenters you would check out. Um, and that was one of the feedbacks we got was that everything, they needed a break, they needed a break for some water, some snacks, bathroom breaks. So this time we'll have a, a few minutes in between each presenter to give you a chance to go take a break and then come back. It was just a lot, a lot of fun. We are very excited um, to do it again. So here are our supplies. Oh, hello from Sun City, Arizona. Nice to see you there husband oh mine he is out uh, with the kids visiting grandma while i'm home and i have a quiet house quiet house first time in a while <laughs> since everyone's been home this year um <laughs> it's kind of interesting penny says if we were signed up for the last one do we need to sign up again no if you're in the group if you already joined the group last time on facebook you are right in there and we are going to show up in that same place in that same group um, so no need to sign up any place else again if you were involved in the first one hi maria from southern california thanks for joining me so I talked a little bit about our pink beading wire. We're gonna use the pink rhodochrosite Softlex beading wire today. Um, I'm making an 18 inch necklace and I cut about, uh, about 30 inches just cause I like to have a lot of extra to play with. Um, and I'm gonna use two strands in this design. So I cut two strands of 30 inches each of the pink rhodochrosite, medium diameter, 0.019 pink. You can find that at softlexcompany.com. You can also find these tools at softlexcompany.com. I'm gonna be using a pair of flush cutters and our magical crimping pliers. And what this does is this turns a two by two millimeter crimp tube into a nice little round bead. So it's a beautiful finish. It's an easy tool to use once you've had a little practice and get, get the hang of it. Um, and it's one of our favorites especially mine. I use it all the time. I have some lobster clasps here and I will be using the 
Let's see if I can get it open. Here we go. Sterling silver, two by two crimp tubes right there. And these are from Softlex Company. Softlex has really great quality crimps. Crimps make a huge difference in your stringing design when you're working with beading wire. Our crimps are seamless and double the walls, uh, thickness of most on the market. Um, really high quality. If you struggled with crimping before, it could have been your crimps that were giving you trouble. I highly recommend you picking up some from us if you um, if you need them. And they come in sterling, gold-filled, copper color, as well as um, blackened. This is a sterling silver crimp that has been blackened. So as for my beads, so those are all the supplies you can get at Softlex Company. Oh, in addition to these little bead stoppers, we've got mini bead stoppers and regular size bead stoppers. My nails match again. Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. I painted them this morning. <laughs> you know, when my nails start to grow, sometimes I keep them really short. And right now this is considered long for me. Um, so when they start to grow, I do like to paint them for my videos when I remember so they look a little nicer. And if I'm gonna bother painting them, I might as well match my jewelry, right? So all of the supplies I just talked about, you can get at softflexcompany.com. And now we'll talk about the beads because the beads are not at softflexcompany.com. These are from my stash, but I did reach out to some of my friends in the Great Bead Extravaganza to find out where you can find um, similar items. So the first one we'll start with is the conch shell beads here. And these, these are actually something I purchased. They're shell conch rice cut. I actually purchased these during one of Softlex Company's live sales. So if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, um, over on the Softlex Company Facebook page, we do a live bead and jewelry supply sale every three to four weeks. Um, they're usually one-off items or unique beads that we have a very limited supply on. And I had picked these up during one of those sales. Um, so you can join us over on Facebook and you can also check the Softlex Company website for our calendar to see when our upcoming sales are. Um, and if you're in our Softlex VIB studio Facebook group, we always announce the live sales and share the live sale videos in that group as well. So that's a great place to stay informed. So that's where these were from. Next up is, I have these really pretty pink freshwater pearls. Now these are dyed um, and I've had these in my stash for so long. I'm so excited to finally be making something with them. And for those, you can find colored pearls from our friends at the Bead Gallery Honolulu and that's thebeadgallery.com. Stars Beads at starsbeads.com. Um, you may need to send them a message if you are interested in purchasing from Stars Beads. And the Bead Place, beadplace.net. Again, they told me they don't have them online at the moment, but they do have the colored pearls in stock. So you may need to send them a message if you are interested in seeing what they have in their colored pearls at the Bead Place. Next up, I'm gonna be using some Super Duos. So Super Duos are little unique seed beads that have two holes. And you see a lot of people use these in bead weaving projects. Um, they're really fun to work with. I use them a lot in just simple stringing projects and I'm gonna show you how I use them today. This is a color called Blue Turquoise Picasso. And the size of this is a 2.5 by five millimeter. Um, super duos are super fun. I really like them a lot. And this is just a little small sample I have left from another project. And it's always nice to be able to have a few little beads here and there, right? 
So Super Duo beads, you can find those from our friends at The Bead Place, beadplace.net, and beadshop.com. They have a large selection at beadshop.com, and they have six new colors launching tomorrow, January 19th. So look out for those. And lastly, I have this beautiful artisan ceramic pendant. This is another bead that's been in my stash for so long, and I'm really excited to be able to finally play with it. It is handmade ceramic, um, hand-formed and hand-glazed by Gaia Handmade. She calls this Locked to Love. Has such a beautiful color. And you can find her work over at GaiaIndieMade.com. I would also check out her Instagram. She's very active on Instagram. And you can see what she's got in her current stash um, over there. I've had this for quite a while, so I don't know if she's making them anymore. But it is called Lock to Love is what she had it named. Um, so if you are interested in this particular pendant, uh, you could probably reach out to her and ask her if that's something she still she still creates. Lydia says that I love fans. That dish is beautiful. Thanks, Lydia. I went um, to the thrift store and I picked up some really pretty dishes and little bowls, and I now have them in my um, my little bead area so that I can use them i thought i actually picked it up to bring to a shop to sell some jewelry with but um i ended up switching it out for something else and when i pulled it out today i said this is a perfect little little bead tray i love it so here is what we're going to be working on today this is the first half of the necklace design as you see i've got two strands of soft flex beading wire i have three little pearls, and then the super duos to make these little clusters around the necklace, and then accenting with the conch shell. And then we're gonna add our pendant right here, and then we'll beat up the other side. So let's just clear out my space a little bit. I'm making a necklace about 18 inches long. And this is considered my center right here. So the first thing I gotta do is I needed to add a little jump ring to my pendant so that it would lay correctly. Because if I strung it on, If I was to string it on this way, it would lay in this direction. So I needed to add a jump ring to have it go this way. So I decided to make one with soft flex and that's what I did here. It's just made a tiny little jump ring with the pink wire and a two by two soft flex crimp tube. And now when I string it on, It'll lay correctly. It'll be really secure, so there's no way of that jump ring popping open. And it's going to match and sort of blend in to my necklace design. So I figured the first thing I'll show you guys is how to make a little soft flex jump ring. Liz says, that's a beautiful start. Love the color combination. Thank you. I'm not a super pinky kind of girl, but I do love pairing pink with this teal color. And then I thought that the, um, the softness and sort of earthiness of these shell beads really helped accentuate it and kind of tone it down a little bit. It turned out to be a really pretty, pretty color combo. So to make a little jump ring, all you do is cut a small piece of soft flex beading wire. You're gonna string on a crimp, 
And then you're gonna go back through that crimp, making yourself a circle. And then you can make these as large or as small as you need to. The only thing that you need to make sure is that your tool fits inside the circle that you create. So once you have your, your shape, you're gonna place your crimp tube right in the center of the magical crimping plier. Give it a squeeze. And when you pull that out, it's gonna have four pinch corners, just like so. so. Then you're gonna put it 90 degrees from that first. So if you squeezed it this direction, now I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees and I'm gonna slide it back inside, right in that center. And once you feel it's in the center, you give it another squeeze. And then I like to roll it around a few times. There we go. And I just sort of roll and pump, roll and pump. So I'm rolling it around, lifting it up, then closing it, then rolling it. And the key is to make sure that your crimp stays right inside this little notch here. And then your tube turns into this sweet little bead. Maria says, not a fan of pink, but pair it with a turquoise and it all comes together and the conch shells brighten it up a little bit. Yeah, I think so too. The other colors that I really love to pair with pink are like antique brass or, um, or even copper, just to kind of tone down the pink a little bit and give it a little more earthy feel. And then I seem to really get on board. And then you just trim up your wire, cut it up right to your crimp, right as close as you can get it with your flush cutters, and you've got yourself a nice little jump ring. So that's what I did here to attach the pendant. And now we're just gonna string our beads. Diane really loves these colors. Oh good, I'm so glad you guys are digging it. It turned out to be a really pretty, girly but not like overly girly, I don't know, <laughs> color combo, right? So here I've got the two Super Duo beads right on the either end of that jump ring that I made with Softlax. And the Super Duo beads are a lot of fun to just kind of string as little spacers, especially when you're using two pieces of Softlex wire in color because they kind of give you a little separation and um, just create a little interest there. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. So now I'm gonna make a little cluster of pearls. And when you're working with pearls, sometimes their holes are a little bit, um, a little bit snug. So it's good to have a bead reamer around. Ooh, I'm off camera, sorry about that. Let's pick up one that's not being a, Penny's wearing pink today. You're matching me too. Sometimes the hardest part on these videos is stringing beads, right? <laughs> Sherry just ordered the pink wire. Oh, awesome. Um, Penny says she knit a hundred yard spool of that pink. So sad it's going, you need to stock up. Yeah, we do still have quite a bit in stock, so it's not gonna disappear like overnight, but it is a color that um, will not be coming back as we start to sell out of it. What is going on here? Ha! 
Hi, Donna. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so all of these beads were on my necklace. So I know that I can string them. I think I'm just, uh, need to wipe my hands a little bit. There we go. What if you cut the string at the angle? You can do that, you can give that a try. I really had them all on here. I had to actually unstring them because I wanted to, um, I strung them all before the video so that I could take a picture and make sure that the wire goes through them all. And it totally did. There we go. Whew. I think it just was making me sweat a little bit and then, um, and then it's hard to string beads. There we go. Okay, so as I was saying, we're gonna make a little cluster. So I'm gonna do three pearls. I'll do two on one strand, one on the other with that one being in the middle. And then I will connect them with a, um, oh, you know what? I needed a conch bead. Maybe the beads were trying to tell me something. They were like, hey, we're not ready. You're not ready for us yet. I should have been listening. I should have been listening to my beads. There we go. See, now we're even. <laughs> the pearls are having performance anxiety. <laughs> I think they were just trying to tell me they weren't in the right place. <laughs> they were like, hey, pay attention. <laughs> pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> I like that, Penny. There we go. Hi, Paula, welcome. Becky's not crazy about the light pink, but that is beautiful, that pink and the green combo. Yeah, I think maybe this combo can, um, can sway even the non-pink lovers, huh? There's something about pink and teal. So there's my little cluster. I've got two beads on one strand and one bead on the other, and then I'm gonna add A little, <laughs> and then I'm gonna add a little super duo spacer. And what I did here is I did two clusters and then we added another shell bead. So I'm gonna do another cluster. Just popping in for a moment. That's okay, Paula. Hopefully it inspired you. And you can always come back and watch it later. Um, this video is on the Softlex Company YouTube channel. I'm here live, but the replay is always available later. <laughs> Deborah says, listening is all right, but if you start answering back to your beads, then it's time to worry. <laughs> Great, yes, catch us on the replay. Catch us on the replay. I do talk to myself a lot in my head, I think, when I'm, uh, when I'm creating. How about you? Now when I'm on these videos, I'm getting, I'm getting comfortable talking to myself out loud. I'll probably end up doing that more often when nobody's around. So a cluster of three pearls and then another super duo bead as the spacer. So now we'll add a shell bead again and then another super duo. Do you, yeah, I get the best answers, Paula. 
<laughs> I think I'm just brilliant when I talk to myself, right? <laughs> Fran says she does it a lot to keep calm. Yeah, I remember as a kid, I always talked to myself um, as a kid too. A lot of times I would replay things in my head and I think I would say it out loud, not realizing. I remember my little sisters both calling me out on it like who are you talking to what are you doing and oh just myself <laughs> sherry tells herself she's talking to anything that will listen sometimes we just you know we want good company and you know sometimes we're the best of it <laughs> we're the best company we could get right <laughs> <laughs> Fran says her sisters would look at her like she's gone. Yeah, they both used to call me out on it. And I was like, doesn't everybody do this? Maybe it's the creative, you know, maybe it's the the creative creativity in us that we just uh, have imaginary discussions. Donna needs to make sure her voice still works. She talks so little. Oh, Donna. You need to sing to yourself. Belt out a little bit. All right, so what I did here is I started with two clusters and then a shell, and then I went up to three clusters of pearls and then another shell. And then on the back end, I just went back to the pearls because this is the back of your necklace. Um, you really don't see it anymore. So I just did all the pearls up that way. Donna does talk to her dogs. Oh yes. We talk to our animals a lot in our house too. And um, my husband in particular is really funny. He changed, he has a whole different voice when he talks to the dogs. He's like a whole different person. <laughs> And then we like to pretend uh, we know what they're thinking and what they're saying back to us and give the dogs their own voice too. So, you know, that's always fun. Maria talks to her plants. I should talk to my plants more. They say talking to your plants is really, um, really healthy for them. Have you guys seen that study where they have had um, a couple of different plants, the same plant basically in, in a few different places and someone talked to them with a positive reinforcement and encouragement and then on another one they talked to them with negative thought, negative comments and, um, and one just got neglected, didn't get talked to at all. And there was a huge difference in how they grew it was pretty amazing. I mean, it's all energy, right? We're all energy. And so plants, animals, people, we're all part of this energetic field. And it was just such a nice reminder to like how important it is to treat people kindly and to mirror the energy that you want back in your life, even with plants and dogs and <laughs> oh I'm loving this conversation Deborah says right now I'm laughing out loud and it's the middle of the night everyone is asleep <laughs> I hope you don't wake anybody but that is funny where are you that it's the middle of the night right now you must be pretty far from me here in the Arizona desert Suzanne talks to the dog all the time. Okay, so I gotta make sure I'm paying attention to my pattern. So I've got three clusters and now I get to add another shell. Oh, you're in Sweden. How fantastic. Oh my gosh. 
That is a bucket list place for me. It looks like a gorgeous place to live. Vanessa talks to her beads as long as they don't start talking back. She figures she's okay. I bet talking to them helps you come up with really good solutions. Oh no, Lydia, your husband has valley fever? I'm so sorry to hear that. I haven't heard of anybody having that in quite a while, but I know it's pretty common here. How's he doing? So Paula is in Sweden and Deborah is in Israel. Wow, Deborah. Speaking of Israel, that is where my, um, my mother-in-law's boyfriend's from. And that's where my husband and my kids are over at their house right now. He's been here in the States for a while now. But that is where he grew up and where he's from. Oh, Fran says it's true. She worked in a greenhouse and true plants love the attention. That would be a wonderful place to work, to be surrounded by plants. I just find plants and flowers so endearing and so good for the soul. And I would love to be around them more often. Suzanne uses sentence and answers when you talk to your beads. Well, do they cooperate with you then? Or <laughs> sentence and answers. Oh, Lydia, he's hanging in there. He had pneumonia at the same time. Holy moly. He was just knocked down with both, huh? I'm sorry to hear that. Hope he is on the mend. Donna says, being around the plants would be nice, but the humidity would kill me. Oh, that's a good point. You need, you need uh, desert plants. You need cactus and succulents and things that don't need, uh, <laughs> don't need all that humid, humid air. Deborah was born in France, and now she's lived there for almost, in Israel for almost three years. so nice to hear um, where you guys are from and so interesting to me that you guys are so far away and you're here watching me. That's amazing. So I have one, two, three, I think I did four. One, two, three, four, five clusters up the back. Okay, so almost done. I'm glad the pearls started cooperating once I realized, I think they were trying to tell me they weren't in the right spot. Get it together, Kristen. <laughs> I was getting kind of nervous because I said, oh my gosh, I have a lot to string if they're gonna not cooperate. So what I was starting to say is when you're using medium 0.019 Softlex, um, you can find it difficult sometimes to string pearls. You may need to go down a size to the 0.014 fine. However, the fine doesn't come in all these really pretty colors. So um, when I can, when they do fit, I get very excited. And a lot of times before starting a project with beads that 
are like pearls, which may or may not go through the medium wire, um, I always like to do a bunch of spot checking. So I did do that with this project before I, before I settled on using them to make sure that it wasn't just one or two beads that fit through and then the rest were not going to. Um, so just do some spot checking and make sure it fits. You can use a beading awl to help ream out the inside a little bit if they're close to fitting. Um, or you can go down a diameter to the 014. But luckily these worked because they work so well with the pink wire. And I'm using a matching wire, you know, the pink beads and the pink wire, um, but you can also use a Softlex color that is different and contrasts with it. So here's what we got going on. And I just make sure that this little guy goes back between there. There we go. And now we'll add our clasp on the end. Um, the other thing you can do is you can play with how close or far apart these are. So you can like scrunch your beads down if you want them to be a cluster that, that's tight, or you can kind of pull them a little bit further apart to make it a little more loose in there. So now I'm gonna finish it with a lobster clasp. I was thinking about which kind of clasp I wanted to use. And since I'm using a ceramic pendant, I decided to just go with the trusty old lobster clasp because it's nice and secure. I know it'll be good back there and my necklace is not gonna slide off because if this were to fall off, I would probably break that pendant and be really, really sad. Yes, Deborah, it's a ceramic heart. It is made, it's an artisan made heart. It's handmade. Um, I'll just show you here again. It's called Lock to Love and it's hand formed and hand glazed by Gaia Handmade. And this is her website right there. Um, she may not have this exact one on her website any longer. So that's why I added in the name of what it was called. This way um, you can always send her a message, but she has a lot of other really lovely, gorgeous beads. I have quite a few of her beads. Um, thanks, Damien. Damien Softlex Company just shared the link to Gaia's website too. So you guys can easily find that. All right, so I'm gonna add my clasp. Thank you, Fran. So I'm gonna string down the two by two millimeter crimp tube down both strands of Softlex. And then I'm only gonna string the lobster clasp on one of the wires. And that's because the two by two crimp tube fits three strands of medium soft flex. So it's got two going up the crimp and then one looping back down. Just make sure that you've got your clasp on the one that you're looping back down. And then using your magical crimping pliers, you're gonna go ahead and place that crimp tube right in the center. Create your little pinched ravioli Turn it 90 degrees, place it back in the center, squeeze it, and then kind of pump and roll it around in there a few more times. And that just helps cinch the crimp down into your, into your nylon of the beading wire, and it helps to really form your crimp tube. Now, if your crimp tube slips while you're working with this tool and it ends up not in that notch, it is going to kind of squish it a little bit and it's not gonna look quite as pretty. And that's usually the main issue when you're first learning that tool is to really get it in there 
in the center. And then using your flush cutters, you can get your flush side of your cutters right up next to your crimp, trim off your excess wire, and you've got your clasp connected. And then on the other side, and this is a decent sized little piece I have left. It's probably about four inches or so. I will hold on to this. So just a tip, always hold on to things that are at least four inches or more in um, the wire because then you can make things like your little jump ring and stuff and just use them from your scraps. You don't have to, it works really well for um, when you're making any earrings or you just need a little bit of soft flex. So I keep a little plastic baggie by my desk and just put anything that is a decent size left over in that so that I have it on hand. Who said they knitted a really long something with this wire early on? Um, was it you, Penny? Um, I'd love to see what you're talking about. Whoever that was, I think you said you used a bunch of this pink to knit something. Um, share it with me. If you're in the VIB group on Facebook, you can tag me so that I see it. Or if you wanna send it to me in an email, you can always email me at Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N, at softlexcompany dot com if you have any questions or something from a video too you're you're you know you're welcome to email me and i'll see if i can help sort that out so now i just made a loop on the other side you can attach a split ring or a chain or something here um, or you can just create a little loop with the soft flex and now you can connect your lobster clasp right on that loop you have a really nice secure finish and there you go karen says it's beautiful and gorgeous thank you karen deborah you can use the super duo beads in weaving but it's a whole different technique yes so i wanted to talk a little bit more about that i'm so glad you just brought that up so most of the time um, when you see super duo projects i think they really tend to be weaving uh, it was Penny. I'll try to post it after this video. I made it into a mask lanyard. Ooh, I'm so interested. Thank you. I'd love to see it. But, um, but it's really fun to be able to just use those little super duos as spacers, just like this, in a multi-strand design. This one is a two-strand design. Or you can even up it and have a few more strands and do it in between. Um, and this is, you know, it gives it a really neat texture to have these little clusters in there, but it's all just simple stringing. I mean, there's nothing um, super tough about what we did here today, just stringing and crimping. So talking about super duos, I have a few designs here that um, are from the book that Sarah Ayler and I co-authored, and it is all about um, using these neat two hole beads in simple stringing projects. So this is one of the bracelets from the book. And these are both using hot pink super duos. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm, I'm really laying on the pink today. So <laughs> this is another one. And this has a gorgeous pendant from our friend uh, Cynthia over at Green Girl Studios. She's another one of our friends over in the Great Beat Extravaganza group. Um, this is one of her gorgeous pendants. She makes really beautiful things. And this is using the Super Duos in, as connectors in this chain. This chain is made up with soft flex, antique brass, um, beading wire, and crimps, and these closed jump rings, and then the Super Duos. So this is another project that's in the book, Seed Bead Revolution. And you can find it on Amazon. Thank you for sharing, Damien. Softlex Company just shared um, 
a link to Seed Bead Revolution on Amazon. This one was on the cover of the book, and it is an, a long braided uh, bone soft flex beading wire necklace with a handcrafted little um, circle center. This is a ceramic bead. And then these are the super duos uh, just used to make these little soft flex tassels. So these are soft flex bone beading wire with some crimp tubes using that magical crimping plier. They look like little beads at the end. And it just made these fun little, little tassels with those super duos. You do need to stock up on crimp tubes. I know, we, um, I go through a lot of crimps. <laughs> and crimps are just one of those things that are great to stock up on. Uh, so this is the book, if you've never seen it before, it's called Seed Bead Revolution. Sarah and I wrote this a couple of years ago together. And that's the necklace there on the front that I was showing here. Um, and we use all of these fun seed beads, these different shapes, two whole ones, tilas, and we do them in simple stringing projects. So traditionally these kind of, and the other thing we do is we show them all in two colorways so that you can get an idea of what it looks like uh, with two different colors, which is a lot of fun. There's that one. And since I was talking about super duos today, I just really had to, to share this book with you guys. I don't talk about it that often. <laughs> so, so if you like simple stringing, but you wanna do something a little bit different um, with those little seed beads and two hole beads, that is a fun book to pick up. What else do I have to share with you today? Did I catch everything? Oh, Penny, you bought it after seeing Sarah on Beads, Bubbles, and Jewels. It was your introduction to Softlex. How awesome. We, we do need to do another book, Lydia. Sarah says it all the time. <laughs> Sarah teases me about it all the time. And uh, she's like, when are we doing that second book? When are we doing that second book? <laughs> One of these days, there's always something going on, right? So it's, it's hard to find the time. Um, but we should probably start it and just do it little by little. That's how things happen, little by little. I'm so glad you found us uh, through the book, Penny. That's awesome. Once Rona is gone, <laughs> the book looks amazing. Thank you. Karen says, I like simple stringing. My fingers will not let me do the complicated beading. Yeah, you know, Sarah and I are both um, are both moms. I don't have any little ones anymore. She's got a lot of little ones. But when we thought about this book, we thought about how can we use the beautiful colors of Softlex with all of these really fun seed beads and tiny little beads, but do them in a way that is quick and just a lot of more simple stringing. You don't need a lot of complicated techniques. Um, and I think, we, I think we put together something really fun. There's about 30 different designs in there. And then our friend Nile of Silver Silk did a bonus project at the end, which is a really, really special project he did for us in there. So it was a lot of fun. Um, I can now say I'm an author and that's pretty cool. Maybe we'll do another one in the near future. So thank you guys so much for being here today. I hope you really enjoyed this, this technique and the do it yourself, Valentine heart, key to your heart um, necklace project. If you weren't a fan of pink before, um, maybe this project in this color scheme has swayed you a little bit. And if you are a fan of pink, that pink is like such a really pretty burst of, uh, burst of, it's almost like a bubble gum, like just a really true, true pink. Um, I definitely would pick some up. It is a closeout color, so once they're gone, they're gone. Um, but it's a it's a color that we have on sale, and then we have an extra sale going on with our extra 20% off this week for all of our pink curated items at softlexcompany.com. You don't need a coupon. It ends tomorrow, um, January 19th at midnight, and it's not valid with any other order discount. So if you get other order discounts normally, then the, you're not gonna get that extra there, but it is um, valid for all retail purchase prices. Um, 
So last thing I just want to share with you is our videos coming up. Let's see. Sherry missed the book name. Can you repeat? I sure can. It's called Seed Bead Revolution. And it's over on Amazon. It's written by myself, Kristen Fagan, and co-authored with Sarah Ayler. Let's see. I know we've got a few videos coming up this week to share. Let's see. See where I put them. All right, so we've got January 20th on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Join Sarah Ayler over on the Softlex Facebook page for a new jewelry demonstration. Then I'll be back here next Monday, January 25th at 3 p.m. Pacific time on the Softlex Company YouTube channel live. Um, we are tentatively having a bead, a live bead sale on January 26th at 1 p.m. Pacific time over on the Softlex Company Facebook page. It's probably going to happen, but we are saying tentatively because we've had some um, things come up and we have some inventory and stuff to do. So it's a possibility it might get pushed back, but uh, mark your calendar for January 26th. It's most likely going to happen that day. Um, and then on January 27th at 3 p.m. Pacific time, you can join Sarah Ayler on the Softlex Facebook page for our Valentine Passion um, Mystery Kit Reveal, Unboxing, and Design Challenge. And that kit, if you haven't picked up that kit yet, Valentine Passion, it's um, about 82% sold out. And once those are gone, they're gone. We curate a mystery kit every month. If you're new to us, you can check it out over at softlexcompany.com. Um, they're always a lot of fun. And uh, we theme them, curate them. And this month is the Valentine Passion Design Kit. We may even be showing it and um, working with it in the Great Beat Extravaganza in February. So let's see. Uh, Let's see what, I see I missed a few comments, so let me see what you guys are saying here. Oh, Vanessa, you're having a new grandbaby on the 25th. Congratulations. I saw a few congratulations going by. Um, how wonderful. So happy for you. Very cool. All right, I think I... If I missed your comment, I'm sorry. You can always leave a comment in the video um, down below. Again, if I missed it during the live and I go back and I check those um, like once a week or so to see if there's any comments there. So if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them on the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like today's video. And if you're new here, subscribe. Um, we're getting really close to 10,000 subscribers here on the YouTube channel, and I've been cooking up some ideas on how we can celebrate. So if you're new, subscribe to us, stay tuned, and um, we have some celebration ideas in the works. So looking forward to that. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I'll see you next Monday, and happy early Valentine's Day. Bye.